So, the other day, I was doing my daily browsing of Wikipedia when I found this. It represents a four-dimensional cube, or tesseract, undergoing a rotation along both the X, Y, and Z, W planes simultaneously. This completely boggled my mind, and I just had to simulate it. First of all, let me point out that the visualization is not four-dimensional. Rather, it is a representation of four dimensions in three dimensions, and it is then rendered on a two-dimensional screen. What does this mean? Well, let's take a cube. It's a perfectly fine 3D object. I mean, it's no four-dimensional cube or anything, but it'll do for now. We can represent this cube as a series of planes or cross-sections cut along the X, Y, or Z axes. Obviously, the 2D planes are not actually 3D cubes. Rather, they are representations of 3D objects in a 2D space. If we take two planes, one at z equals negative 0.5 and another at z equals positive 0.5, and connect these two planes with lines that represent all other possible planes along that axis, we once again see a cube. This is kind of the visualization we'll be doing for our 4D tesseract. If we take a cross-section along the w dimension, let's say at w equals negative 0.5, we'll find a three-dimensional cube. And if we move along the w dimension from w equals negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, we'll see that this cube scales in size. Now, just like in the 3D case, the lines connecting these cubes represent the sum of all cross-sections between the two cubes. So this is not a perfect representation, but it's as close as we can get. So we have a representation of a tesseract, a four-dimensional cube. Now let's rotate it. In Cartesian XY coordinates, we can rotate a system with a simple rotation matrix. In four dimensions, this doesn't really change. We can see a rotation in the XY plane simply by tacking an identity matrix onto the end of our rotation matrix. So now let's get a little crazy. What happens if instead of rotating in the XY plane, we rotate instead in the ZW plane? Well, this happens. We cannot represent the W plane very well, so it looks like one cube rotates around and engulfs the other cube in an endless struggle for dominance. Now, it doesn't stop there. Because both of our rotation matrices have two dimensions free at any given moment, we may actually perform a special type of rotation known as a double rotation by rotating in both the X, Y, and Z, W planes at the same time. And with this, we can finally replicate the animation on Wikipedia. But wait, there's something I missed a second ago. Projections. If we have a four-dimensional point, how do we represent it in 3D? Well, the obvious answer is to take a 3 by 4 matrix and multiply by that, but if we take any arbitrary matrix, say the identity matrix with zeros along the W dimension, the rotation doesn't look quite right. This is because most tesseract depictions use stereographic projections, which resemble the act of holding a light source behind an object and checking its shadow against a screen. Of course, for this analogy to work for projections from 4D to 3D, we have to assume that our screen can somehow hold three-dimensional objects, but let's ignore that for now. Basically, all we need to do is divide every element in the matrix by LW minus W, where LW is the position of the light source on the W axis, and W is the position of the point itself that we are projecting. Now, here's the cool part. By varying our LW parameter, the location of our light source along the W axis, we can see dramatically different visualizations, even though the rotations themselves have not changed. So there you have it, how to simulate a tesseract undergoing double rotation. I found this incredibly cool and I hope you did too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.